I want to take just a moment before we get into tonight's study and tell you about a friend of mine. He's already been in introduced to you by Larry. His name is Thomas Patton. Thomas came to us by way of the flood. It wasn't because of the flood. Because not long after the flood hit, Thomas showed up, came into the enrichment center, sat down to have a meal with us. Thomas is a gentleman that lives over in New Johnsonville. So obviously his home was not flooded. If you ask me, from the earliest of days, I believe that Thomas came here because he was looking for something that we could offer him that he was not readily finding anywhere else. He didn't know it at the time. He just knew he was here to get a meal. But the more times we sat down at table to eat and to talk, the more a friendship developed. And it became very evident that Mr. Thomas was in need of a friend. If I can encourage you to do anything over the next few weeks, come into the Enrichment Center at 8 o'clock in the morning, at 12 o'clock noon, and sit at a table. Mr. Thomas came in because he, in his own words, said, Someone from the flood needs a distraction. I hope I can do that for them. Thomas has done more than that. He's garnered a lot of attention. A lot of things have changed for him over the last year. He has lost some weight. He has discovered that he had a couple of spots on his forehead and face that turned out to be cancerous, and he's had them removed. Mr. Thomas is healthier now than when we first encountered him, but it's because of the good cooks we have continuously providing meals and us giving him a place where he can come and be with people, have much needed interaction and camaraderie. And Mr. Thomas is a challenge for us. As Jeff mentioned this morning, you sit around those tables, it's not long till a Bible discussion breaks open. It's not unlike Thomas to bring in something, something that is an antique of sorts, something that's just of interest to him, so that he can share it with someone else. He's liable to give it to you if you share any interest in it with him. But if nothing else, it's a conversation piece. Thomas is also likely to bring you a book, a track, a pamphlet. And it usually follows this line. This guy is saying, and you fill in the blank. Then Thomas will give his comments. I think he's on to something. Would you read it and see? He may say, but I don't find that in Scripture. Can you help me to find it in Scripture? There's been a couple of times when I've taken the page that Thomas was on, turned it back to him and said, If this is from a scriptural foundation, where is the book, chapter, and verse for what is being said? Thomas will quickly scan the page and tell you there is no book, chapter, and verse. Thomas concludes on his own that they are probably presenting information to you as if it is God's Word when it is not. Thomas is very sharp. Thomas is just one of many examples of an individual in our community who needs a friend. And when we show them friendship, look what happens in just over a year. Thomas was not in need of the food. He could afford his own. His home was not lost due to the flood. There was no damage done to his home. But Thomas felt that he could meet the need of someone else if he came to sit at a table. And I believe many more can do the same. With that in mind, I say that friends are friends forever if the Lord's the Lord of them. 
There are many examples of friends in Scripture, some of which I mentioned Friday night at the devotional. These examples of friends tell us what it means to be a friend. It gives us an example of how we can be a friend to someone else and also impart to us what a friend might need from us. You see, friends go above and beyond. Friends will do the unthinkable for one another. When Abraham, Abram at the time, heard that his relative Lot was taken captive, his loyalty sprang into action. Genesis chapter 14, verses 14 through 16. When Abram heard that his relative had been taken captive, he led out his trained men born in his house, 318, and went in pursuit as far as Dan. He divided his forces against them by night, he and his servants, and defeated them, and pursued them as far as Habor, which is north of Damascus. He brought back all the goods and also brought back his relative Lot with his possessions and also the women and the people. Would you go above and beyond for the people who are seated near you? Friends become family. People of different ages from various parts of the world forge friendships. Ruth and Naomi became friends and ultimately family. Ruth said to Naomi, Do not urge me to leave you or to turn back from following you, for where you go I will go, and where you lodge I will lodge. Your people shall be my people, and your God my God. Where you die I will die, and there I will be buried. Thus may the Lord do to me, and worse, if anything but death parts you and me. Ruth 1, verses 16 and 17. Have you forged any friendships with someone that is so strong that they've become family? Friends may become friends at first sight. Most friendships, however, are built over time, but on a rare occasion, some develop almost instantly. David and Jonathan became friends at first sight. 1 Samuel chapter 18 verses 1 through 3 tell how their relationship formed. Now it came about when he had finished speaking to Saul that the soul of Jonathan was knit to the soul of David and Jonathan loved him as himself. Saul took him that day and did not let him return to his father's house. Then Jonathan made a covenant with David because he loved him as himself. When there is friendship at first sight, it's because someone is looking for new connections. Are you looking for new connections? Friends feel for each other. King Saul put pressure on his officials when he was in pursuit of David. He put the pressure on them to find David. So do, uh, Doeg, the Edomite, tells Saul about Ahimelech's dealing with David. Saul becomes suspicious then and su suspects that Ahimelech and the other priest are actually helping David hide from him. So Saul ordered their execution. Saul's men, though, refused to carry out his orders. And Doeg, the Edomite, in turn, killed 85 priests and their families. But, 1 Samuel 22, verses 20 through 23, one of the sons of Ahimelech, named Abathar, escaped and fled after David. Abathar told David that Saul had killed the priest of the Lord. Then David said to Abathar, I knew on that day, when Doag the Edomite was there, that he would surely tell Saul, I have brought about the death of every person in your father's household. Stay with me, do not be afraid, for he who seeks my life seeks your life, for you are safe with me. The unfortunate circumstances of Abathar's family being put to death brought David and Abathar close together as friends. Friends who would vow to protect and to feel for one another. Do we feel for one another? 
do we sense one another's pains and discomforts? Are we concerned with the struggles of others? Friends of a friend will try at times to help. You see, your friends are my friends and my friends are your friends, or so the song says. David's friend Nahash had a son, Hanan, whom David tried to befriend. In 2 Samuel chapter 10 and verse 2, after the death of Nahash, David said, I will show kindness to Hanan, the son of Nahash, just as he has, or his father, showed kindness to me. So David sent some of his servants to console him concerning his father. Hanan's advisors falsely concluded that David's ambassadors were actually spies, so they publicly humiliated the consolers David sent to Hanan. The result was an ensuing retaliation going back and forth, resulting finally in war. Friends of friends do not always work out to become new friends of ours. But it begs the question, have you closed off your friend circle so no one can enter? Friends should be loyal to the end. Unconditional friendship brims with profound respect and little expectation of reciprocation. An example of this friendship is witnessed in 2 Samuel chapter 15, verses 19 through 21. Then the king, David, said to Etai the Gittite, Why will you also go with us? Return and remain with the king, for you are a foreigner and also an exile. Return to your own place. You came only yesterday, and shall I today make you wander with us while we go where I will go? Return and take back your brothers. Mercy and truth be with you. But Etai answered the king and said, As the Lord lives and as my Lord the king lives, surely wherever my Lord the king may be, whether for death or for life, there also your servant will be. Togetherness breeds friendship. And it doesn't take long till one is willing to lay down their life for another. Are you loyal to your friends? Are you willing to be there by their side? Are you willing to serve their needs? Friends leave an imprint on us. In 1 Kings chapter 5, verse 1, it tells us that Hiram king of Tyre sent his servants to Solomon shortly after he had been anointed king. And Hiram had always been a friend of David. So Solomon was granted rest on every side and he had intended to build a house for the name of the Lord. And that's when Solomon made this request of Hiram. Cut down cedars from Lebanon. Send them to me for the building of the temple. 1 Kings chapter 5, verse 7 says that when Hiram heard the words of Solomon, he rejoiced greatly and said, Blessed be the Lord today who has given to David a wise son over this great people. The quality of a person is not really in their name, but in their actions, which build a good name. Friends know the quality of a man's descendants. Is your friendship leaving an impact upon others that will long outlive your time on the earth? Friends draw closer when needed. When adversity hits, friends get there fast. They feel the pain and they comfort us. Job chapter 2 verses 11 through 13 illustrate this thought. Now when Job's three friends heard of all his adversity that had come upon him, they came each one from his own place. 
Eliphaz the Temanite, Bildad the Shuhite, and Zophar the Namathite. And they made an appointment together to come to sympathize with him and comfort him. When they lifted up their eyes at a distance and did not recognize him, they raised their voices and wept. And each of them tore his clothes, tore his robe, and threw dust over his head toward the sky. Then they sat down on the ground with him for seven days and seven nights, with no one speaking a word to him. For they saw that his pain was very great. Friends draw near, but they do not crowd. They sympathize, yet allow mourning. They comfort, but without a word. How fast can you get to your friends? How fast can they get to you? Friends stick together. Elijah and Elisha stuck together. In 2 Kings chapter 2, verse number 2, it's nearing the time in which Elisha or Elijah will be taken up. So Elijah goes to Elisha and says, Stay here, please, for the Lord has sent me as far as Bethel. But Elisha said, As the Lord lives and as you yourself live, I will not leave you. So they went down to Bethel. They went together. Not long after this journey, Elijah was taken up into heaven. But on this journey, Elisha repeatedly affirmed his loyalty to Elijah. Do you stick close to your friends? Friends help friends to help others. When Daniel was appointed ruler over the entire province of Babylon and chief over all the wise men there, Daniel made one request of the king. Daniel 2 verse 49 says, Daniel made the request of the king and he appointed Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego over the administration of the province of Babylon while Daniel was at the king's court. God may lead a person to help friends so that they, in turn, can help others. Daniel won over King Nebuchadnezzar because of Daniel's relationship to God. Daniel knew of Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego's relationship with God. And he used his power and influence to help his friends help his people even further. Friends can speak candidly with one another. Jesus, with his disciples, went and visited at the house of Martha in Luke 10 verse 38. Martha was the sister of Mary and they together had a brother named Lazarus. After Lazarus died, Jesus referred to him as our friend Lazarus, John 11, verse 11. But when Jesus came to the house following the passing of Lazarus, Martha spoke frankly with Jesus. She said in John 11, beginning in verse 21, Lord, if you had been here, my brother would not have died. Even now I know that whatever you ask of God, God will give you. Jesus said to her, your brother will rise again. Martha said to him, I know he will rise again in the resurrection on the last day. Jesus said to her, I am the resurrection and the life. He who believes in me will live even if he dies. And everyone who lives and believes in me will never die. Do you believe this? She said to him, yes, Lord. I have believed that you are the Christ, the Son of God, even He who comes into the world. Do you speak the truth about Jesus in an honest and straightforward way with your friends? Friends introduce friends to other friends. 
In the last chapter of Paul's letter to the Romans, he introduced friends to one another, asking them to greet those who were close to him. He instructed in Romans, 6, or Romans 16, verses 3 and 4, Greet Prisca and Aquila, my fellow workers in Christ Jesus, who for my life risk their own necks, to whom not only do I give thanks, but also all the churches of the Gentiles. Wisely selected friends are worth sharing with others. Prisca and Aquila, putting their necks on the line for the sake of Paul, made an impact on him, and it was worth sharing. Do you share your friends with those who are in need of a friend? Friends look out for one another. They are concerned about the interest of Christ. They send others when they themselves cannot come. They are concerned for the sick and they are concerned for those from whom they have been separated. It's a lengthy passage but one that has great detail. Philippians chapter 2, verses 19 through 26. Paul penned, But I hope in the Lord Jesus to send Timothy to you shortly, so that I also may be encouraged when I learn of your condition. For I have no one else of kindred spirit who will genuinely be concerned for your welfare. For they all seek after their own interest, not those of Christ Jesus. But you know of His proven worth, that He served with me in the furtherance of the gospel like a child serving his father. Therefore I hope to send Him immediately, as soon as I see how things go with me. And I trust in the Lord that I myself also will be coming shortly. But I thought it necessary to send to you Epaphroditus, my brother and fellow worker and fellow soldier, who is also your messenger and minister to my need, because he was longing for you all and was distressed because you had heard that he was sick. Do you look out for one another? Do you look out for your friends the way Paul's friends looked out for one another? Friends like Timothy and Epaphroditus. Proverbs 17 verse 17 reads, A friend loves at all times, and a brother is born for adversity. Friends are friends forever, if the Lord's the Lord of them. Does your friendship, does your friendship, imitate these friends of the Bible. They are examples of friendship and having love for one another. A friendship that is demonstrated in their actions and their words. A friendship that is needed by a lot of people in this world. If you're not in need of friendship, you are definitely needed to give your friendship. Jesus said, Greater love has no one than this, that the man that one lay down his life for his friends. John 15, verse 13. Jesus laid down his life for you because he wants you to be his friend. What greater message to share with the world than the love that Christ has for them and His desire to have them as one of His friends. And when they become a friend of Jesus, they become a friend of ours. Tonight, you may be in need of friendship. Our prayers, our heart goes out to you. We would love to get to know you better. We would love to try to fill that role and to find many others who can help you on life's journey. It may be that you have not being, been being the friend you ought to be to those around you. You may need forgiveness. You may need encouragement. You may need strength and guidance. 
the kind which only comes from the Lord. If subject to the invitation of the Lord, come now as together we stand, as we sing.